Stable Diffusion comes to Mac OS and we take a look at the latest GPU from Nvidia. Now, if you are on Mac OS, there's finally a solution if you want to use models like Sta Stable Diffusion and Llama on your Mac device. New app called Odyssey has come out, which allows you to use multiple different models on your Mac device without having to go online. Now the service has been in development last year. It came into public beta this year and it will allow you to run Stable Diffusion 1.5 SDXL, the latest version. You've got control nets, you've got super resolution, multiple background removal options. And on top of that, it's allowing you to run the large language models locally. So this will be your own language models running on your own hardware. You can use ChatGPT with an API. You can also use Stable Diffusion with uh, with an API if you've got an online account. So that's how it works, basically. It's giving you access to all of the stuff that we have on the Windows platform, but on Apple. And it's going to give you the same benefits of having access to the open source models, the same privacy benefits, the options that you've got. You can choose your own models. You can choose your own custom models. The data is processed locally and you don't need to be online to use this. Now it's going to run as fast as your hardware can run. So the better the hardware you've got, the better it runs. The service is available with a huge number of options and the pricing is the monthly subscription. There are two options. You've got a monthly subscription of $11.99 and that gives you all the features. Now it's in public beta. So there are other features that are going to be added and improvements that are coming along as well. With the other option, listen carefully, you use a pay once, use forever option. So this is not an annual subscription. You own it outright. That's $119 and that's a one-time purchase. You get one year of updates. Now this seems to me a pretty good idea from our point of view on the Windows platform because we need as much competition for Nvidia as possible. And if you've watched this channel for quite some time, you'll know that I've been looking at Apple as being a serious competitor to Nvidia. In fact, I think they are pretty much the one really serious competitor that Nvidia might have from the consumer point of view. You can use this to create the kind of workflows that we have inside of Comfy UI. And I will have a link to this in the description or in the comments section below. Apple is apparently in talks to let Google Gemini power their iPhone AI features. Now, this is not a formal announcement from Apple. This is a Mark Gurman article on Bloomberg. And one of the key pieces to take away, it's something which I thought myself, a deal with would give Google Gemini a key edge with billions of potential users, but it also might be a sign that Apple isn't as far along with its AI efforts as some might have hoped. And Bloomberg being a financial site, they say it threatens to draw further antitrust scrutiny of both companies. Now there have been issues with antitrust for both Apple and Google. Some of the arrangements where Google essentially has a monopoly on the search on Apple devices, that has caused a little bit of pro problems for Google as well as Apple. Stability AI have come up with a new 3D video model. What they're saying with this one is that it allows you to create 3D models. They're calling it Stable Video 3D. And this new model allows you to take inputs and to create models out of those inputs. The inputs can be still images, moving images, and it creates a, a model which is more realistic than if you just use a single image input, which is what their previous model did. And it also allows you to create more accurate models because you're looking at the, at the thing from multiple different angles. Now, what they say is by adapting our stable video diffusion image to video diffusion model with the addition of camera path conditioning, stable video, video 3D is able to generate multi view videos of an object. The use of video diffusion models in contrast to image diffusion 
as is used in stable 0123, provides major benefits in generalization and view consistency of generated outputs. This is one I'll be taking a look at. I haven't had a chance to really explore the possibilities. You can see obviously an improvement on previous models, but at the same time, I think we're probably still early days in this kind of technology. This one is gonna be available on the Stability AI membership if you want to use it commercially. But the models themselves, I've taken a look at them. They're about 10 gigabytes each. Now at GTC yesterday, NVIDIA launched this new Blackwell platform. And this new platform, which replaces the Grace Hopper architecture, this one is huge. According to the announcement, this one is going to be 208 billion transistors. The a single Blackwell chip is going to be 208 billion transistors and is going to be used to power the new data centers of the future. Now, this new one is about four times the size of the Turing architecture, which came out in 2018, about four times. Turing architecture was about 53 billion transistors. And this new one is really significant in how it's actually manufactured. In the presentation, NVIDIA indicated the size of the new chip is much, much larger than the Grace Hopper. Now you're looking at the Grace Hopper chip right now. That's the new Blackwell one. But the Blackwell chip, which is named after a mathematician who actually was alive until 2020, 2010. So this is the first time they've named an architecture after someone who was in the 21st century. The chip with its 208 billion transistors, and you might be able to see it there, it's actually made of more than one chiplet. It's made up of two major components, and these two components apparently are connected together with an interconnect that's capable of, and I think I've got this right, 10 terabytes of data transfer per second. And that gives NVIDIA the ability to create what are basically known as multi-chiplet uh, designs. This design has been perfected by Apple with their M M2 Ultra and also by AMD. This is the first time that NVIDIA have produced such a beast. And what's good about this is that these, these types of designs are usually less expensive. It's usually much, much tougher to create a 200 billion single chip transistor than to create one that made up of two chiplets. So this may actually be useful in bringing down the cost. And you can see the kind of devices there that NVIDIA sells to its corporate customers. And what they're saying is that you'll be able to pull out the old Grace Hopper units and then just push in the new units, the new Blackwell units, just like we take out our graphics cards and then replace them with new graphics cards when there is an upgrade. And that analogy carries because if they can create a chiplet design for their corporate customers, they might be able to use the same type of design for maybe GPUs like the RTX 50, 5090, maybe the 6090. So they may be able to produce really powerful chips, but without having the huge expense of creating perfect, massive pieces of silicon that you would need for a monolith design. So this is exciting and it's a sign maybe of what may come in the future. Certainly we know at this stage that Nvidia is extremely competitive with their new chips. They're probably gonna outperform everyone for the time being, but it does give us an indication that they've managed to overcome some of the challenges that AMD and Apple have already overcome with their chiplet designs.